Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Laskwit, and in this video I'm going to show you how I solved the input forms challenge from rpachallenge.com. I'm going to use win automation for this challenge. And the input forms challenge, although it sounds really easy, it isn't that easy. If you go to the website rpachallenge.com, you immediately see the input forms challenge. And when you enter the data into the first item on the form, you can click submit to go to the next item. And when you click submit, you actually see how difficult it is because it changes the complete form. At first you might have only one column with multiple values below each other. When you hit submit, it might change to a four column form. And that makes it really difficult because the name field could be completely somewhere else on the screen. And that's really a big challenge for RPA in general. Because whenever you want to enter some information on the website and there has been a new designer and he or she maybe changed the whole website around, that's something that could break your RPA script. In this case, we're gonna show you how that has been solved through Win Automation. And without further ado, I just want to show you how it works. So let's switch to my desktop. Here we are on my desktop in the browser on the website rpachallenge.com. As you can see at the top, you have multiple challenges here. You have input forms, shortest path, movie search, invoice extraction, and today, we are going to use uh, the input forms one, and that's the one that we're going to try. You can see the instructions on the left side. So the goal of this challenge is to create a workflow that will input data from a spreadsheet into the form fields on the screen. And here comes the difficult part. Beware, the fields will change position on the screen after every submission throughout 10 rounds, thus the workflow must correctly identify where each spreadsheet record must be typed every time. So that makes it really difficult because normally you have a normal form where usually all the stuff is in one place the whole time. So first name, if it comes first, then it will always come first. It won't change to the last one, for instance, in the row. So that's the really challenging part about this. And here it shows the actual countdown of the challenge will begin once you click the start button, until then, you may submit the form as many times as you wish without receiving penalties. Good luck. So there's two buttons here, download Excel and start. And if we download the Excel, I already did that. So let me show you the Excel. There's an Excel here and you have a header row where you have the first name, last name, company name, role in company, address, email, and phone number. And there's a couple of rows here with uh, examples. So when we go back to my browser, you can, for instance, see that we can add the company name here, phone number, first name, address, email, role in company, and last name. And when you click submit, you can see it immediately changes to one column. So it's not uh, two columns anymore, but one column. And when I click submit again, can see that it switches around all the different parts. And when I click it again, it randomizes all the different input fields. And you can see that it also switched to four uh, columns. So that's the difficult part about this. So what I always try to do at first is um, I go to Win Automation. So let's move to Win Automation. I already have the RPA Challenges folder here and I have a process called input forms. And at first, um, yeah, the first part I, I already showed in a previous video that was about um, launching Excel and opening a document and then get the first free row on column from Excel worksheet. So that's all about getting the first free row so that you can get only the data that is filled. So that's um, uh, one of the actions. Then you get all the uh, data from the Excel worksheet and that will get also the, um, the value from the 
previous action to get the last row here. And that's uh, the first open row minus one. So that's, um, that's the last row that contains data. Then it closes Excel because we have the Excel data and we don't have to have Excel open anymore. Then after that, we launch Chrome. Uh, and I always like to open it up maximized so that we can see Chrome in full screen. And then I also use the initial URL called uh, www.rpachallenge.com. I also store the Chrome instance into the browser variable. Then we start with pressing a button on the web page and we use the button start here. And of course I already took care of the button start. So I got that from the add control part. And that's not the hard part because that's kind of, yeah, the, the start button is always on the same spot. It not, it's nothing different. Uh, so the really hard part is actually in the form. And that's where I have a function for. So you have a for each loop here. And within that for each loop, we run a function called submit form. So when I open submit form, you can see all the actions that are in the submit form uh, function. And in here, you can see lots of populate text field on web page actions because we're gonna input a lot of stuff into uh, the input fields here. So when I open up one of those, you can see that we use the web browser instance browser. We use a control uh, on a web page, of course, and we fill in the details from the current item. So pay attention to this part because that's important. Before I uh, showed you the same thing, but then without the uh, the brackets here, I used the dot and then first name or something else I used there. Um, but in this case, we have first name with a space in between. That's from the Excel. So we have first space name. And to avoid that there's going to be any problems, we need to have the brackets around there and the double quotes. And then in, inside there, you can just put the header column in there. So that's the, uh, that's the first part. To make sure that you have the right controls. That was a, uh, yeah, a bit tricky because I had to look at the code here uh, because the source, of course, when you hit F12, you can select the input field. And in the input field, I saw that there was a label role, for instance, and that was a, a, in a property. It was a value label role and the property was ng uh, dash reflect dash name. So what I did was I got that uh, ng dash reflect dash name with the uh, value label role. And I used that as um, yeah, the, the, the way to find the right column here. So to find the right input box, I, I used that certain thing. And how did I do that? I actually, let me close this down. I went to my process here and I added a control. And when you do this, you can of course select your role in company, for instance. Then when you open it up, you can see that it's input ID VR something, uh, VR joy, it's here. Um, and when I edit this, you can see that there's all kinds of things in here, uh, but there's not my, my, my column that I needed or my property that I needed is not in here. So for that, I actually used the custom uh, way of building this. And I used the input, the same thing as here. I went back to my RPA challenge uh, screen. I hit F12. I select the rolling company part. I went to this part. I copied that, I went back here and I pasted it in here. So when I do that, you can see that ng reflect name is label role. For me, that was uh, the way to, um, to actually create the control here. So this is uh, input uh, role in comp uh, company one. And that's how I made the selector. So to, yeah, I already had the input uh, role in company, but this is the new one I created. 
And uh, with this, uh, this custom selector, uh, I was able to fill in the details in here. So that's what I did for all the parts here. So I used that to make sure that everything was in there. Um, and in this case, I of course used the input role in company in here and the current item with the brackets around there and the double quotes role in company. So let's see how this works when I open or I will start the process. So let's just go into main and select start. I already closed my browser window and that's to make sure that we see it from scratch because um, probably when you are running the RPA process, and this is not a process you're gonna run in production of course, but it's good to see that it can start all the applications by itself. So both Excel and Chrome will be started. So I hit the run button. It's opening up Excel. You can see that in the background, it went really fast. And now it starts filling in all the details in the, or from the Excel spreadsheet. And it will go through and uh, submit every time you can see at the left bottom corner, you can see that we're in round three now. So that's the third uh, item in the Excel spreadsheet that is being filled in. And now you can see that it's going through all the different, uh, the different values in here. And I believe that we have to go until round 11 to make sure that all of this works. And you can see it changing around. It, changes from one column to three columns width and now it goes to one column again so there's tons of uh, tons of stuff possible here and it's really a really um, good solution right now because it can manage uh, all the ch all the changes in the screen so that uh, that's something that's really uh, really good for this and it goes relatively fast I think that it's not really slow or something um and there's no errors that's the big thing so here we are 10 rows have been entered uh 70 uh 70 fields have been entered yeah and what i ad added at the end um i got the ele elements from the web page the the chrome web page and i used a message box to make sure that uh at the end i got a congratulations with the success rate in here instead of via the browser so I close down the browser as well. And when you click OK here, the whole process is done. So this was how I solved the first RPA challenge. With that, I want to end this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you really liked it. If you have some comments, please leave them in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope to see you at the next video. Bye bye.